Welcome back, my most amazing fifth grade artists. We're on day two of our self-portrait behind my mask project. Today, we are going to focus on the inside of our self-portrait. Last class, we did the outside, but now we get to focus on uh, drawing the what's behind our masks, but also including those descriptive words about who we are or how we're feeling during this time. So in terms of materials, what you will be needing is that drawing that we've already started, but you're also going to need a second piece of white paper for the words that are gonna go on the inside of our self-portraits, okay? You are also going to need your pencils, black marker and crayons, just like last time, but also this time you're gonna need a glue stick and scissors to add those words, okay? So, once you have your materials all set out, seems like we're ready, I also wanted to share with you a little art mantra that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Um, it is something that I like to say to myself when I'm starting a new project to feel confident about what I'm going to be doing because art is challenging and you wanna be very confident in what you're doing to keep going even though things are really challenging. So. I'm going to read through it. You can read it along with me or just listen. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep down I know I got what it takes. I am an artist, which is definitely what all of you are. So now that we kind of have our confidence all built up, what I want you to think about at this point, take a moment right now to already think about what descriptive words you are going to choose to put on the inside of your project, okay? Again, these words can be simply words that show how you're feeling during this very unusual time. They also can be descriptive words about your personality, such as bubbly or humorous or kind. It can also use phrases of things that you're really interested in. For example, good at soccer, something like that. So take a couple minutes right now, think to yourself, which sort of words do you wanna include? And before we get started, I'm gonna say you probably want to look up the correct spelling of these words, because if you were to misspell the word, and glue it on your project and find out later that it's misspelled, that would be such a bummer. So go ahead, use either your computer to jot down some descriptive words that you're thinking about, either use spell check or look up the correct spelling and have the correct spelling on hand so that once you are adding your words to your project, you're gonna make sure that those words are correctly spelled. All right, if you have all your materials and you have all your words and you got that confidence boosted up, then we're ready to start the second half of our project. Let's get started. Okay, now we're on the second portion of our behind the mask self portraits. So what we are going to do is we are gonna unfold our papers. And as you can see, I have here the outline of what we're gonna be drawing next. Now on your paper, since uh, we pressed very uh, hard that time th that we were outlining our face, you should be able to see a slight line of where the outline of your face has been drawn on this side of the page. So once you open it up, look for that line. And then what you are going to do is you are going to take your pencil and you are going to go over that line that you're seeing. If you can't see that line, one of the things you can do is fold it back up and then press really hard again over uh, that outline and see if you can see it. But if once you get, you're able to see it, you're going to trace back over all the lines that you have created on the outer flap. Okay, so you should have your chin, you should have your ears, and you should even have the lines of your neck outlined. Okay, once you have that, what we're gonna concentrate on drawing is the outline of your nose 
and your mouth as well as your shoulders and the outline of where your neck meets your shirt. So let's start with your nose and what you want to do is you're going to go a little bit below your nose about kind of like halfway between your chin and this fold. I would say let's say it's about like mm, one inch down. You are right underneath that one uh, sort of dashed line. You're going to draw that little letter C, kind of like a parenthesis. And right below that other little line, you are going to draw a backwards C, like a backwards parenthesis. And then what you can do is just in between those, you can give an upside down curve for your nose. Okay? Then for your mouth, you can do your mouth in many different ways. The way that I have it here is open, and the way that I've done that is that right underneath my nose, I made a wide, kind of curved smile curve, because our mouths are wider than our nose. So I might make a dot over here and a dot over there to control how wide I want it to be. Then I'm gonna draw my slightly curved line from dot to dot. Then right underneath, I'm gonna draw a curved line that dips down and back up. So maybe I don't want it to dip down further than here, so maybe I'll make a little line or a little uh, dot to make sure that I won't go below that dot. That dot. So I'm gonna take my pencil, I'm going to dip down, I'm gonna kinda of hit that dot, and then I'm gonna come back up, okay? So it should be kind of like a crescent. Then I might make a little line for my uh, cheeks, here and here, and then I'm gonna do a curved parallel line right underneath this top smile line for my teeth. So I'm gonna do a parallel line going across, and then if you wanna put a tongue, it's up to you, you don't have to, what I do is just a little curved line like that, and then a curved line that connects from that curved line. Okay, this part looks like it's done. What we wanna do is then uh, make our shoulders. So what you're going to do is from your neckline, you're going to go down a little bit and then go horizontally across uh, uh, across the page. Go down a little bit and then horizontally across the page. Um, then we can draw a little curved line underneath our necks that shows where our necks meet our shirts. And then now you're going to, um, if you have long hair that that extends down into this section of your picture, you can extend your hair down longer, the outline of your hair. If you have short hair and it doesn't extend down into this part of your drawing, that's fine, because all your hair should be up here. But since my hair is long, I'm gonna extend it down, or at least the outline. And then once I have my outline all ready and everything looks good, I'm gonna, you guessed it, outline in my black marker or Sharpie. So I'm just gonna go over my lines. You guys can go slower than what I'm doing. Uh, take your time so that you don't accidentally get off the line that you're trying to outline. So I'm gonna outline everything in my black marker. And once I've outlined all my lines that I want to keep, then that's when I'm gonna start again kind of coloring things in. So again, you can find those people colors or the combination of your uh, rainbow colors that you used to create your skin tone from the day before. You're going to use your best coloring to color in. So using small strokes back forth to color in, trying to fill in all the white space as best as you can for your face, your ears, and don't forget your neck as well. Once you have your skin colored in, you can use a red crayon to color the inside of your uh, mouth and a pink crayon to color your tongue if you chose to uh, draw your mouth that way. You can also use the same colors that you used to uh, color in your hair to color in uh, your long hair if it extends down into the lower part of your picture here. So again, I'm gonna use the same crayons I did uh, the last time, that yellow and brown, trying to fill in all the white space. And then also I get to choose any color 
that I want to color in my shirt. In fact, if you want to, you can even create designs on your shirt as well, kind of like how you did your mask. Totally up to you. I'm just gonna pick a solid color for mine. So I'm gonna use a different color than my background. So I'll use purple since it's different from my sky background. And again, I'm using best coloring, trying to uh, use small strokes to color back forth back forth i'm careful not to get any of my crayon of this color onto my sky background that's below here okay so you're going to use best coloring to try to color that in and then once you've colored in your shirt with your best coloring then you can also start filling in your background here my background remember i have my sky so maybe i'll add more clouds and then anywhere where it isn't clouds, I'm gonna use my best coloring to use small strokes back forth, back forth, filling in the white space to totally fill my background. And then once you have your background all colored in, and your face is colored in, your shirt is colored in, everything's colored in, you can fold it back up, take a look at yourself with mask, and then unfold it to check yourself out uh, with out your mask. Now for your words that will describe kind of like who you are, how you're feeling, what your interests are, what you can do is on a separate piece of paper you can um, draw the words that you want and cut them out and glue them on, or if you'd rather, you can uh, draw your words just on your background, up to you. I kinda wanna put my words um, on a separate piece of paper so that they really show up. So what I might do is I might lay my page down, okay? And I'm just gonna look, I can kinda see through, so I can kinda guess how big I want my words to be. So one of my words that I might put is artistic. And if I look and I see, I probably have about this much space to write the word artistic. So I can write it out in just regular print, but I kind of want to jazz it up. So one of the ways that I can do that is when I outline it, I might add a little dots wherever the letters end, like that. And I'm going really fast, but you guys can take your time to do your lettering. And I might put a little bubble around it to make it really kind of stick out. Then I might choose a different color. Let's say a color I haven't used yet, like this magenta. I'm going to color it in using my best coloring, trying to fill in the white space as much as possible. I'm going really fast, but you guys can uh, go a little bit slower. Then, once I have uh, my letters done, what I can do is take my scissors, cut along that bubble, cut out my word, And then, once I have it cut out, you can use a glue stick or glue, it's up to you, to then put glue on the background. And then figure out a place where you want your uh, words to go. Remember, you don't want your words up above your nose because it's gonna show up when you fold up your mask, so anywhere where it's kind of below your nose. So maybe I'll put one here. Another word that I can come up with, maybe something about the way that I'm feeling about starting school. So what I might do is put the word HAPPY, and maybe I do it in all caps. But again, to jazz it up, I might try to make these bubble letters. Now, if any of you have tried bubble letters before, they're, they're pretty easy. What you do is you draw out your letters just re in regular print, and then around those lines, you're just gonna draw a bubble around it, meaning you're gonna 
take your line you're going to go around create a bubble around so that your lines are in the middle bubble it around and if you have a letter that has an inside like this a you're going to also draw parallel lines going around those bubble it around your p and on the inside bubble it around bubble it around your Y and then once you have bubbled your letters you can take your eraser and erase the printed letters that you've kind of bubbled around since you don't need those anymore I'm gonna erase those okay and then once I have the letters that I want that are bubbled I'm gonna use my black marker or Sharpie to go around the lines, the bubble lines that I'm keeping. So here's my bubble happy letters. Okay, and then once I have it outlined, I again can either draw some sort of design around it or just leave it and then color in my letters. And maybe I want to choose a different color behind my letters. So I chose yellow for my letters, but maybe this time I'll choose pink for be behind my letters so it really pops out. So I'm going to use my best coloring, trying to stay within those lines and fill in the white space of the background behind the letters. Once I have that, again, I'm going to cut it out. Once I have my new word cut out, again, I can use a glue stick, put glue on the back of this uh, piece of paper with my happy word, and then find a place where I want to put it. Maybe I'll put it on this side as well. Okay, if I were you, I would come up with at least four or five different words or phrases that describe who you are, what you're feeling, or one of your interests to put on the inside below your nose, but above this below flap. Okay, I hope that this makes sense for you. Again, if you need any sort of clarification, be sure to write me an email and I'll certainly answer your questions. All right, good luck, can't wait to see these.